Hello, listeners. I'm Tim Tradamus, and it's Friday. And with me, as always, is my talented and beautiful co hostess, Voice. Good morning, Tim Stradamus, and welcome to all listeners to Friday. May today be the Fridayest Friday that ever Fridayed. <laughs> nice. Voice and I enjoy reading and talking about stories from the internet that are interesting, funny, and dramatic. Because of our love of stories, we've come together and created this channel to share with you those experiences. And hopefully give you some food for that. Well, why don't we get right into the stories while enjoying my morning kip -a brew? What are you going to enjoy today? Peach passion fruit tea. Delicious. Well, yeah, that's good. Ah, good. It's perfectly sweet, nice and fruity. Excellent day to go ahead and uh, hear some stories that I have to offer. Ooh, got to get these stretches. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm scared. You should be. You had to stretch for the stories. For any listeners wanting to follow along, all story links are in the description below for our first story. Am I the a-hole for not talking to my parents over my son's nail polish? My son, 11, recently expressed an interest in painting his nails. I had no problem with it and we had fun picking out a color. He loved it and we made a cute post about it. I got messages and phone calls from my parents saying he shouldn't have done it that I encouraged him because he would never ask to have that done, asking if I was going to let him out in public like that, etc. I essentially said, no, we're not doing any of that kind of talk. He's a child and there is zero harm in letting him express himself in this way. I have had some inklings about my son's sexual preference since he was little, and I can only say that I love every single part of him and nothing would ever sway me from that. My parents, however, are not only not unconditionally supportive of their grandchild, but also seemingly believe that I am in some way forcing a homosexual agenda onto him. My husband is 100% on my side and the side of loving our son for everything he is. To preserve my mental health, I have stopped calling my parents unless it's necessary, which is hard because my mom and I used to talk quite literally every day. I haven't stopped them from calling either of my children or interacting with them on social media, but I do monitor the phone calls and posts to make sure my son is okay and not exposed to negativity about his appearance or style choices. He doesn't know about any of this because I hope to preserve the relationship. He loves my parents so much and I have hope they'll come around, but I don't volunteer any information and I don't reach out to them. Am I the a-hole? All right. Well, let's start unpacking this story of bigotry. <laughs> <laughs> that shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. OP is mom, right? Yeah, Correct. pretty sure she's mom. I don't think you're the a-hole OP. You were being straightforward with your parents. You said that's not what's going to happen here. We're not judging our child for what they want to experiment with or do in their life. We're just happy that they're happy. I think your parents have, uh, they're probably a little older, so they have their values. And I'm not going to sit here and say whether or not old values are right or wrong. You're allowed to have them if you want them. But that also means that your daughter also has the right to not do business with you anymore. And she also has the right to monitor the conversations that happen through her son and you. I would be very cautious because she is. It sounds like she's a good mom. She's making sure that none of the conversations that they have get to a place where the son's being belittled or chastised for his choices. So I don't think you can ask much more from a parent at that point. She says it. Her and her husband both agree on these points. Stay strong in your belief and let your son be happy with whatever he chooses to do. As long as it is his choice. All of the consensus on Reddit is that she's not the a-hole. That she's only trying to look out on his interests and for him to express himself. Yep. Now, we had a few commenters talk on this homosexual agenda that apparently is happening. And they say if it includes pretty nails, then, I mean, keep going for it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what does it matter? Yep. It's just painting your nails. It's just an expression. Now, some people had a little fun with this and said, haven't you heard it's a gateway drug? And then another person said, what's on the homosexual agenda today? Eh, gonna make breakfast, take a walk, maybe watch some TV and see where the day takes me. And it will all happen fabulously. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way to look at it. It's just very silly to yeah. even have that type of, of mentality Mindset. when as a parent, all that you're doing is you're just making sure that they're expressing. That's so what's funny is they thought it was a gateway <laughs> a gateway drug to like, <laughs> oh no, now he's he's homosexual. <laughs> he, he used blue nail polish, You're not guys. going out in public, are you? <laughs> what are you doing? It's so silly. But yeah, it just sounds like uh, we got a good parent in there, so. 
Keep oh, yes. being a good parent. Just let your kid, as long as they're happy and healthy, you're doing it right. What more can you ask for than that? Well, let's go ahead and leave this mom to continue her amazing parenting. And let's go on to our next story, which might just pull at your heartstrings a little. No, oh, no. For our next story, am I the a-hole for firing my sister after she threw out my son's pine cones? This happened over a week ago. I, 30 male, need to know if I am the a-hole or not. My son, 7, passed away from a heart condition he had. It'll be two years in July, and my world still hasn't been the same without him. Ever since he was 5, my son had an obsession with collecting pine cones. He loved them for some reason. Every trip to the park or hiking trail, he'd come home with a bag of pine cones he picked out. I helped him preserve them so they would last way longer. It became a fun activity for us to do at home. His last Christmas, he gifted me a pine cone he painted himself, and it was the best gift ever. I kept all of his pine cones stored away since he passed. Sometimes on bad days, I like to take them out and admire them. A couple months ago, my sister lost her job. She's a housekeeper, and my parents urged me to help her out by hiring her to clean my house. That wasn't an issue for me. The problem with my sister is everything needs to be cleaned her way, or she throws out things she deems aren't worth keeping. For instance, my late wife's old sketchbooks that she found in my garage, or my old guitar that I don't play as often as I used to but still keep in good condition, my old wood carvings, etc., I've had to tell her that unless it's in the trash can, don't throw it out without checking in with me. I came home the other day and saw my storage closet nearly empty. One of the things missing were my son's pine cones. She wanted to surprise me, but I was so overwhelmed I told her to leave or I was going to scream at her. She texted me later to ask what she did wrong. She just saw that it needed to be tidied up and thought I wouldn't be too mad. I called to tell her, She's fired for throwing out my son's pine cones because she knows how much he loved collecting them. Her defense was they weren't really necessary to keep around when I have other things of my son's like his toys and drawings. But this was specifically something that he loved so very much. Now it feels like a piece of him has been taken from me and I don't want her in my house again. My sister begged to keep this job because she was relying on this and to give her another chance but I couldn't bring myself to that. Everyone is mad at me for leaving her without a job. My mom is angry at my sister for what she did and told her off for being insensitive. However, she feels that losing income shouldn't be a punishment for hurt feelings. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Want to add that my sister did not throw out my wife's things as well. Sorry if I made it sound like she did. I mentioned those because they were things she insisted should be thrown out. My son's pine cones were thrown out, among other things in the closet, but I'm not too focused on those since they don't hold that sentimental value. Unfortunately, I was not able to retrieve the pine cones since the garbage truck had already passed before I got home. Sadly, they're gone, and so is a piece of my heart. That's a terrible story. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll start this. I don't believe you are the a-hole OP. Your sister stepped over a boundary that she shouldn't have. You told her not to, if it's not in the trash, it doesn't go out. She took it upon herself to deem things that have nothing to do with her, valuable or not, to your life. No one has the right to do that. It sounds like OP has gone through a lot, though, because he lost his son, and it sounds like he had a late wife. So he lost his wife, too. Life has not been kind, and I'm sure that on the cake that is life, that little cherry at the end didn't feel good to come home and... Have uh, the the piece of your son that was a good memory gone now? Uh, I can't imagine the hurt. And I don't care about the sister needing a job. She should have respected your boundaries. She can go find another job. You can't replace those pine cones. That sucks that for her, she looked at it and went, they're just pine cones. And OP's right. She probably knew that those pine cones are important. But she looked at them and threw them in the trash like everything else. Ooh, the anger that's welling up in my chest, you can't get it back. It's gone. He got home and it was gone. I'm sorry that you had to come back to that and there's nothing you can do to retrieve it. You're not the a-hole and I'm sorry that your sister did that to you. Well, the consensus is that he's definitely not the a-hole. In fact, a lot of them were saying try and get in contact with garbage company, figure out where the truck might have taken those pine cones. 
at least to get something or anything back if you can. That sometimes people do throw away things and it's not on purpose. And some people do find what they're looking for. Do they? Good. That's got to be insanely hard. It It is. It especially probably is since, finding the needle in the haystack. Oh, definitely. Especially since they weren't just normal pine cones. They were pine cones that they had painted together. She was aware that this was something that they did. Oh, I undoubtedly, I know she knew. How? Callous. Yeah, I just don't get the mindset behind that. You know he hasn't been having an easy time. Could you imagine losing your partner and then losing your child? That's ridiculous. And then to not have the compassion. That's a terrible story. Well, unfortunately, I don't have an update for this as it looks like he possibly deleted his account. Well, I hope wherever he's at, he learns how to find peace with this because I don't I don't know how you could that I don't know. Well, this was, as I said, something that really tugged at the heartstrings. Let's go to something that's a little more lighthearted, shall we? Mm. For our next story. Am I the a-hole for not paying my boyfriend Uber prices for picking me up from work? I'm temporarily working somewhere else. It is 20 pounds to get an Uber home. I use the app often enough that I get regular discounts up to 30%. My boyfriend offered to pick me up from work after I told him the price of Uber sometimes. He got us home. It's a 30-minute ride, about 20 miles. Afterwards, he asked me to pay him. I said, fine, I don't mind paying petrol costs. He said, I'd have to give him the 20 pounds because he went out of his way to get me, and I would have given it to the Uber driver anyway. He insists that it makes no sense for me not to pay him what I would have given the Uber driver I told him that's different because he's my boyfriend and the Uber driver is a service. I told him I'd give him 10 pounds, which he wasn't happy about. Am I the a-hole for not giving him what I would give an Uber driver? It's not like I'd pay the price of a Starbucks coffee if my boyfriend made me a cup of coffee. All right. This is a shapoopy. I can understand when someone goes and picks you up, especially if they're a partner or family member or friend, that you guys at least pay for the gas. If they're going out of the way to pick you up, at least do that. It's just courtesy. Now, if there are extra charges above that, you definitely need to have that conversation first. Sounds like that did not happen because um, ergo, he's your boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) So there's not really service charges that come along with that. Would you like for me to add one other detail for you? Oh, please. They live together. No. Oh, wait a second. (laughs) Hold up. (laughs) Something doesn't sound right. (laughs) I thought this would get you. Oh, man. Oh, you are a, your boyfriend's a wiener jacket. That's ridiculous. You'll sleep under the same roof and you had the gall to go, by the way, you were going to pay the guy that much. You might as well pay me that much. What are you doing? Um, So, OP, you're definitely not the a-hole. This is like dating sim and you're doing the wrong thing. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> well, the consensus is the girlfriend's not the a-hole for not paying him over prices. So let me go ahead and actually read to you some small updates that she provided. Oh, perfect. She said, thank you, everyone. There are too many replies to respond to. He was adamant that charging me is normal. So I'll just show him this thread to convince him otherwise. Additionally, she put, I showed him this post and made him read the comments. He apologized. This isn't something he usually does and was out of character. But a lot of posters are saying, hmm, something's a little suspicious here. Yeah, that is a little suspicious. At least he apologized and it's just something that she can now look out for. And if it crops up again, she knows how to handle it or time to move on. I wish them all the best. Yeah, they sound like kids. They'll learn. Well, let's go ahead and head towards a party next, shall we? Let's go. For our next story, am I the a-hole for sending my cousin the bill for my kid's birthday cake because her kid ruined it? We recently threw my five-year-old a birthday party. He hasn't had a real birthday party since he was two years old due to COVID, so this was the first one he'd actually remember. We wanted to make it special, so we invited all of our closest friends, family members, and their kids. One of my cousins, a single mom, has a very unruly six-year-old. He is loud disobedient, and a nightmare in public. When it came time to blow out the candles and cut the birthday cake, he came and stood directly next to my son. I anticipated what was going to happen next and asked my husband to stand behind this kid in case he tried to pull anything. After we sang, this kid kept trying to blow out the candles, 
My husband kept blocking him and pulling him back and we could tell the kid was getting frustrated. Eventually, my son blew out the candles and the kid absolutely lost it. He threw a tantrum and slammed his entire arm into the cake, knocking it into the table. It was so awkward. Everyone gasped and got quiet. My son looked up at us and I could tell he was about to start crying. In an effort to not cause a bigger scene, my husband picked him up and whispered to him that we had another special cake just for him. We didn't, and he seemed to calm down. Meanwhile, his cousin was still standing there screaming and crying, his arm covered in cake. His mom was nowhere to be seen. I walked him over to the sink and washed him off and quietly told him that he shouldn't have done that to the cake and that he should apologize to his cousin for what he did. He screamed, no, in my face and then ran away. My husband ended up running out to buy a sheet cake that we cut and served to everyone. I spoke to my cousin after the party about what happened since she wasn't in the room, and she brushed it off saying, kids will be kids. I completely disagree. I've been to plenty of birthday parties where the other kids let the birthday boy slash girl have their moment. I suggested she pay for the ruined cake and she looked at me like I was crazy. I told her how important it was to us that this birthday be special to my son since it would be the first one he remembered. And now all he would remember was that his cousin ruined his special moment. She got extremely defensive and refused to pay anything. She then accused me of acting like, the perfect mom, and began to list the ways in which I was, in fact, not perfect. It was a hurtful conversation and we haven't spoken since. I sent her the bill for the ruined cake and she has not paid us. I actually feel she should pay for both cakes since her kid is the reason we had to get a new one, but I didn't go that far. My husband thinks she'll never pay us and that I should drop the issue at this point. He says that since she's a single mom, it's probably hard on her and we should cut them both some slack. I understand that, but I feel like that's just letting her and her son off the hook and this will lead to even bigger problems in the future if we don't hold them accountable. Am I the a-hole here? Nope. You're probably the only rational human being in this story because your husband isn't looking at it the way he needs to either. Although he is a good dad. Not discounting that. He picked up his son in that moment, told him they're going to get another cake, something special for him. So he quilled the storm. So good for you for at least having that presence of mind in the moment. Not okay, though, with his response of, you should just let it go. No, absolutely not. The mother of the child in question, she was wrong because she wasn't in the room. Where are you? When you know your child has... Behavioral issues. Very much behavioral issues going on. Why would you not be there in that moment? Bad parenting? Yeah. So, OP, you're not the a-hole. Definitely start laying down the expectation for what it is to have the kid over from this point going forward because it sounds like there definitely was a dropping of the ball in parenting so far. And I don't care if someone's single or not. There's been plenty of people who are single parents that have good kids. Yeah, definitely. She should reimburse you for that cake that her son ruined. Um, But you're never going to see that. I agree with your husband in that sense. You're never going to see a penny of that. Well, the consensus on Reddit is that she's not the a-hole for this. In fact, they say, don't invite her to anything ever again. If this was their take, they're clearly not good people. And it shows in her child when it comes to her parenting tactics. Now, on another note, it looks like we learned something quite clever, which someone suggested next time you have this kind of larger party, make one small cake really nicely decorated for that individual. So it would be like for the son or her husband if she's going to do that. And then have like a she cake, just a normal she cake where everybody will get the cuts of the cake. Or you can even have just cupcakes so that it can just be individually handed out. And then that way, if something should ever get ruined, it wouldn't be the whole thing. Yeah, I get that. You should always have a backup cake. I've seen too many on AFV stories where cakes get dropped in the middle of singing and I love birthday cake. So it's... He does, listeners. He loves birthday cake Every time I see one of those videos, my heart gets torn out because I'm like, all that cake is wasted now. Well, let's go ahead and leave this birthday party and check out this vacation. For our next story, am I the a-hole for making my son quit his part-time job to go on our family vacation? My husband and I have three children, a 16-year-old son and two daughters, 13 and 10. 
Our son got a part-time job as a lifeguard at a pool back in March. We live in South Florida, so the pools are open pretty much always. It was a good job for him. He liked it and was happy to have the money. The issue was his boss was an ass about giving time off. Our family takes a yearly vacation to this little beach house we rent for a year. We've done this since the year I was pregnant with my son. Of course, the kids all love it and look forward to it. Well, my son told his boss about the week when he signed up, but because that was only six weeks after he started there, he denied it. We made it clear he was still going. It's just a part-time job and there are a million of those. He protested, but we made him go and his boss fired him. He was furious the entire time. He refused to do any family stuff or listen to us, so he was grounded when he got back. It's not that we don't trust him to stay home alone or anything like that. We just don't want him to prioritize work over family, especially some weekend job. He found a job at another pool two weeks later, so it's not like this impacted him in any way, but he still holds a grudge about it. He claims we didn't respect his choices, and he's right, we don't respect him trying to choose his job over family time, though we don't hold it against him since he's just a teen. Am I the a-hole? This one's bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> Is it? That's been all these stories, unfortunately, today. But yes, this is the, I would say this one's a spasimba. You're a giant a-hole. I can understand the sentiment behind it's a family trip. Um, it sounds like you've raised a good son because he makes the best point here. You didn't respect him and his choice. And then you laugh about it in your post and go, I didn't respect his choice to want to work over going on this with a family vacation. What are you doing as a parent? I understand that, again, it's a family vacation. It sounds like a fun time and that they've been doing it for a long time, every year for 16 years. You know what happens, though, as people get older? Those things sometimes don't get to happen as when you want them to, right? Like life happens regardless of if you're there or not your son's growing up he's got a job now what you did teach your son was it's okay to quit that's a terrible example you set for him that sucks you should have scheduled for another time where it could have happened you said it yourself he got that job within six weeks of your vacation you knew that his boss said nah -uh. these are things that you already knew and then you told him he's still going he said he did not want to and you forced him and then at the tail end of this tale your son gets fired and then you ground him. My goodness, you're holding on to it way too hard now. Just take a step back a little bit and appreciate that your son's moving forward in life. That's very questionable parenting. And I hope that she got an earful and maybe there's some redemption arc here. Well, no redemption arc. But let me go ahead and let you know the consensus. Redditors say that she is definitely the a-hole. You stripped him of his choice. If it wasn't an issue about leaving him alone then it should have been up to him what he should do, especially since he's coming to that age. Yeah. Now, what instead should have happened, and a lot of commenters definitely back up this one example, is you should have sat him down, explained to him if his boss is being unreasonable, try and negotiate with him. Those aren't the bosses that you want to work for if sure. they're not able to be understanding. Explain to him the importance of, yes, keeping a job, but then second, not becoming a pushover. It is extremely important. It would have been preferable had he quit of his own choice. Then you would have instilled that he would have had the power to make those decisions and the confidence to do what he needs to do in the future in a professional setting. Now, instead, his first reference might just fall through. His first job, he just doesn't show up. That's not a good look. Well, I know we just recently jumped out of a birthday story, but let's go back into a birthday story for our <laughs> last one. Okay. Would I be the a-hole for not attending my twin brother's surprise birthday dinner when I was only invited as a guest? Move over, Newt. It's time to scoot. So I'm a twin. My brother and I hang out all the time and we are super close. In a few days, it's our 25 male birthday. We share the same friend group and we're all really close and have been since school. He has a close group of girlfriends, about five of them, who I have also known for many years. I would class them as being closer with him in recent years, but we are all still good friends and socialize often together. 
Now, I have been added to a group chat labeled My Brother's Name Surprise Dinner. It's a surprise birthday dinner for my twin brother organized by one of the girls in that group, and they have invited me as a guest. One of them also said in the group that it would be nice to see me as well, so I just feel like an afterthought. I wouldn't really have minded if the girls wanted to organize a surprise birthday evening exclusively for my brother and themselves, but they have also invited my partner and some of my brother and I's closest friends. This feels inconsiderate and quite upsetting as I can't understand why I would be invited to my literal twin brother's surprise birthday dinner with me only invited as a guest as it is also my birthday involving all of our friends. My girlfriend also found this action to be extremely rude and wondered why this girl didn't just reach out to her and then they could have organized a surprise involving both of us instead or have just involved both my brother and I and left the surprise element out of it. In the chat, it is clearly stated that we are all to arrive at one time while my brother is due to arrive 20 minutes later. The thought of attending makes me feel weird because it's just a celebration for his birthday when him and I are literally born on the same day. This isn't new information to the organizer. Also, every year, my brother and I do something together because we want to and because we have the same friends. Last year, our friends and my girlfriend set up a massive dinner for our birthday to which everyone was invited, including the girl group. So now I'm at a crossroads. I don't know whether or not to attend. On one hand, if I don't go, I will feel left out because our mutual friends are going. But on the other hand, if I do go, I will feel like I am letting myself be disrespected and I will likely feel uncomfortable as it feels like only my brother is being celebrated. So would I be the a-hole if I took a stand and didn't go? Edit. My girlfriend just checked the chat and the organizer has booked the dinner for 10 people and a set menu. There are currently 11 attending, excluding my girlfriend and I. If we went, this would make it over capacity. Now we really aren't sure if we should go, because what if we turn up and there is no room? This makes it slightly more awkward, as we may not be able to just pull up a chair and join? The dinner is tomorrow also. Thanks for all the kind messages as well. I will definitely give an update after everything plays out. Wow. This is a very super califragilistic expelidocious story. Amazing. Thank you. They're twins, right? They're twins. This group of friends have been doing birthday parties with twins for a long time, it sounds. They're 25. They've had the same group of friends. Now, he does admit the girls are a little more closer to his brother than him, but they've all been going to the same birthday parties for the twins for a while. So then why would said friend have a birthday party, but only for one twin? Did something go on? Was there more tea that we don't know about? That's interesting. And it almost does feel like, and you would know that this is what you're doing to that twin. There is something there that we don't know. There's like a a little bit of a grain of story that we haven't been told, I think anyway. So what do you think might be happening? Some hurt feelings somewhere along the way is what it sounds like. Because you wouldn't ostracize someone like that if there wasn't some weird thing. But Then they're going out of their way to make a a statement. They're inviting you to someone's birthday party on your birthday. You see what I'm saying? That you were born with. But that's your twin. This is such an odd story. Again, it feels like this is a purposeful get you. OP, I guess you need to reach out and have communication. Like I would go ahead and just nip that in the bud and go, look, I don't know what you're trying to pull. But it's also my birthday, too, and we've been having the same birthday together with our friends for close to 20 plus years. So I want to know what's going on or I'm not attending. That would have been my way of going about it instead of just going, do I go to the party? Do I go to the dinner? I feel a certain way. There's a bunch of feelings involved. Talk to them. The one weird part is I know it's not an accident. There are very few situations in life that are just accidents <laughs> like, quite like that <laughs> yeah that like that you're right i forgot you were a twin yeah no not you really guys look so different from each other yeah, totally well they could have you never know no 
They've been do- <laughs> <laughs> ignorance isn't something you can play on this one. They've been like he says, he's very clear about it. They've been doing these birthday parties together for a while with all their friends, both sides. So OP, you're not the a hole. I would just wonder why they're pulling the stunt. They are. Who do you wrong? Well. Let me give you the consensus first, and then I'll give you a surprise. Oh, no. You've been holding on to something. So the consensus is that the poster is definitely not the a-hole. In fact, people are so flabbergasted and shocked about this. And we're very lucky that he posted an update. Okay. For our update, he says, Hey, sorry, guys. I know you all have been wanting an update, and I felt like I really had to sit with my feelings for a few days and really think about the nuances of the situation. I also want to thank you all for your supportive comments. It made me feel like I wasn't going crazy. (laughs) There's been a lot of common questions, so I'll try to answer those first. Could this be a secret surprise for me too? No, definitely not. Oh, I was like, oh my God, did we get doubled? (laughs) 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 And then you said no. (laughs) No, definitely not. I was added to the group chat with all the other guests and was given instructions on when to be there and when we would all surprise my brother. Also, this girl is not that thoughtful. And if it was a secret surprise, my partner would have known and wouldn't have just let me suffer in silence. Does this girl have a crush on your brother? I was actually impressed by people's intuition. It's not really a straightforward crush. She's been hot and cold with him, but they aren't together. I do think that she tries hard to be the most important girlfriend in his life, though, so I think her organizing this surprise dinner is her way to further trying to achieve that status. So you guys were spot on. To the few who said that I need to get out of my feelings and go, I would have had absolutely no problem at all if they wanted to do something with just my brother alone. If they had just left it to their girl group to celebrate him and left me out of it, I respect that they are closer to my brother and I would have been happy for him. The problem arises when I'm invited as a bystander and my partner and some of my best friends are invited too while completely disregarding that it's my birthday also. That's what made me feel sh- Why haven't some of my closest friends who were invited said anything? I got a call from a friend the day of the dinner, and he said he spoke with our other close friend, and they agreed that it was extremely rude and strange thing to do. I asked him why none of them spoke up on my behalf, and he just apologized and said that he didn't have any excuses for it. They still ended up going to the dinner. My other close friend rang up the day... And she said that she is not attending because it just doesn't feel right to do. Then this close friend ended up texting one of the girls from that group, explaining why she won't be there. The girl then responded with excuses and said that it's not that big of a deal. So I spoke to my other close friends who are also twins. They weren't invited to the dinner and just asked them, how they would feel if they were in this situation. They pretty much said what a majority of you all said. They were so angry on my behalf and said that it was extremely messed up and that they wouldn't go if this was them. They then created a new dinner plan with myself, my girlfriend, and my brother and our closest friends so that we can do a new celebration after our birthday instead. I didn't go to the dinner. It was two nights ago, so my girlfriend and I went to see a movie instead. We figured if we took the radio silent route, our absence would hopefully speak for itself. I was really considering saying something in that chat, but I was also not wanting them to paint me as aggressive. I was also considering calling my brother the morning of and ruining the surprise because I wanted to let him know what was going on and just talk to him. But at the same time, I felt like an a-hole doing that to him. I wanted him to have his moment too. So I decided to wait until the day after the dinner to say something. I spoke to my brother yesterday and showed him the post. And he recognized that it was very rude and stupid of her and said it felt weird for him too. He explained he had nothing to do with it, which, of course, I already knew that and let him know that I never blamed him for it at all. He said at the dinner, the organizer said that she invited me and my partner, but that we just didn't come. So he wasn't actually aware that I was invited only as a guest until afterwards. 
but he hasn't said anything to her yet. I'm not sure if he will mention something to her later or not, though. The organizer hasn't said anything to me either, but I don't really care about hearing from her anyway. Yesterday, both me and my brother went to the new celebration dinner together, which was really nice, and we both had a really good time. So really, this whole thing just highlights who my actual friends are. Update 2. I honestly don't know if this is the best way to go about updating, but here goes. It's been about a week now. Last night, my partner and I went to a leaving drinks and my brother also came with. The organizer of the surprise birthday party showed up there too at that same bar. First time seeing her since the birthday event. My brother said to my partner and I that he did not invite her tonight and that she had just asked what he was doing and has now just shown up with two male friends strange. Anyway, she walked in, looked me and my girlfriend up and down and completely ignored us and went straight for my brother and some of our other friends. My girlfriend and I were in absolute disbelief that she could be so rude, especially after everything. We thought maybe she would try to make amends, but clearly not. She made a point of ignoring us, but left not too long after she arrived as she was out of place a bit since my brother made a point of sitting with me instead of over by her. My girlfriend then said to my brother, why does she have to be so bitchy for? And my brother agreed. I think he is starting to create some distance between himself and her. Maybe. Ha, huh, we'll see. It's clear to see where the organizer's mentality is at, though. Yeah, that might be someone you should probably avoid. <laughs> She's trying to put a distance between the brothers? And no. that's weird. Oh, I guess, yeah. She wouldn't have done that if there wasn't a reason. So That's true. She is already trying to put a distance between the twins, which isn't okay. By even having a birthday party like that, I mean, both twins said it. It was weird. It didn't feel right to go out of your way. And then she almost tried to like lie about it where she's like, well, they, he didn't, didn't show up to the party. No, that's not what happened. You ostracized him and put everyone in a weird position both sides of the aisle were like i this is wrong you know it it sucks for the friends that didn't speak up right because they even at least they admitted to it right they said there was no good excuse for me not to say something but then they still went yeah that's I where think, that's kind of bad <laughs> um yeah i would just maybe not have that type of person in your life because it looks like she's only out for what she can gain and how much she can control. Unfortunately, we'll never know what this girl was trying to pull. Hopefully, though, they learn to stay away from her because she doesn't sound like she's good for anybody. If anything, this is a relatively new issue. We're talking about less than a month, so I wish them all the best with everything that seems to be happening. She sound like trouble. Oh, yes. Well, as our stories come to a close, don't forget, You've seen the world, what you carry in your heart. If you have enjoyed listening to us read and talk about today's stories, please rate, subscribe, and turn on notifications for new content. We are regularly posting on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. As always, listeners, we love hearing your opinions in the comments below. I'm going to leave you with one more question today. What are the weekend plans? Fun Costco shopping's on our list. No. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you post it, maybe we'll see it on the internet.